for anyone that doesn't understand what VO2 max is or why it's important, um, can you explain what it is and why it's so critical to longevity and health span? I think most people will be familiar with the idea that we are obligate anaerobes, which in English means we cannot survive without oxygen. <laughs> okay. So why is that? So oxygen is absolutely essential to catalyze the chemical reaction that turns food into a currency for energy called ATP. Mm. So everybody's probably heard of ATP. ATP is the money, the currency of energy in our body. Anything that interrupts the production of ATP is fatal. So an extreme example of that is cyanide. Everyone's heard of cyanide as a poison. If you take cyanide, you'll be dead within seconds because cyanide blocks one of the transporters in the production of ATP. So this just gives you a sense of how critical it is to have an infinite and abundant supply of ATP. Oxygen is also essential for that. That's why without oxygen, you can only survive for a couple of minutes. Longer than you can without cyanide, but not much longer. So how does it work? So we breathe in air, and that air goes into our lungs, and that air goes through our lungs into these distal things called capillaries, where hemoglobin is bringing the waste product called carbon dioxide back to the lungs, and there's a gradient of, of partial pressure between oxygen and carbon dioxide such that a switch takes place. The air that we breathe in delivers some of its oxygen to the hemoglobin molecules, and the carbon dioxide diffuses off that into the air, and we breathe out air that is lower in oxygen and higher in carbon dioxide than what we breathed in. Mm -hmm. So if I go, that was high oxygen, low carbon dioxide, that was low oxygen, high carbon dioxide. And that's, the, that's happening every second of every day. That oxygen, that hemoglobin molecule that's carrying oxygen is carrying it to every cell in my body because every cell in my body needs oxygen. And that cell in the body is taking the oxygen to run that chemical reaction to make ATP and it's shuttling back carbon dioxide. And it's just the most incredible thing in the world to imagine how frequently this is happening. And the more you exercise, the more you consume oxygen. So oxygen consumption is a proxy for energy demand. So we can measure this. Now to do so, you have to put a mask on because I have to be able to measure very precisely two things. I have to be able to measure exactly the flow rate of air going in and out of your mouth, and I have to be able to measure very precisely the concentration of oxygen coming out. If I know those two things, I can calculate how many liters per minute of oxygen you are consuming. So, you and I sitting here right now are probably consuming less than half a liter a minute. So call it 500 cc a minute of oxygen right now. Because you have to consume some to be alive. And look, I'm moving my arms around and you're nodding and taking notes. So, you know, if you're sleeping, you might be consuming 300 milliliters of oxygen per minute. That's, that's the lowest level. Mm -hmm. If you were to get up and we were to walk around here, that number might go up to 800 milliliters uh, per minute. If we were to walk a little more briskly, we might be at a liter per minute of oxygen. If I said, let's go out in the parking lot and jog, well, we might get up to like 1.5 liters per minute. We pick up the pace a little bit, we'll get to two liters per minute. If I start really, really running us hard, we're gonna get to three and a half, four liters per minute. Well, at some point, I am going to push you so hard that you will achieve your maximum level of oxygen consumption. And if I push you any harder and faster, you won't extract more oxygen from the air. You may go faster, but you will do so through a process that does not involve the consumption of oxygen. You will do, do so through an anaerobic glycolytic pathway, but you will have achieved your maximum consumption of oxygen. And that number has a very special name. It's called VO2 max. So VO2 max measured in liters per minute is the maximum amount of oxygen you can consume. 
And the only way you can measure that, again, is to have this mask with very, very fancy apparatus that measures both of those things I said, and you have to be stressed hard. So we typically do this on a treadmill or on a bike. So your, your, your colleagues that came into 10 Squared yesterday, they did it on treadmills. They ran, and they ran them, and ran them, and they ran them until they couldn't go any faster. And then we measured how many liters per minute of oxygen they were consuming. Now, that answers what VO2 max is. So the next question is, does this matter? Well, the short answer is, we don't have a single metric of humans that we can measure that better predicts how long they will live than how high their VO2 max is. And it's not even close, to be completely clear. So if you compare somebody who is in the top 2% to someone who is in the bottom 25% for their age, uh, the difference in mortality is 5x. 500%. Yes, 400% technically, because with hazard ratios, you, you, you go, two, two, a 2x hazard ratio is 100%. I think yes. that's right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let's look at you. So I see you've pulled this chart out, which is one of my favorite charts. Okay. So you, oh, by the way, there's one other thing I should state. We normalize this by weight. Okay. Okay. So we always divide that number of liters per minute by how many kilograms you are. So the number is actually reported as milliliters per kilogram per minute. Okay. Okay. All right, so if we look at somebody who is your age, male, 30 to 39, if their VO2 max is below 35 milliliters per kilogram per minute, they are in the bottom 25%. Conversely, if they are at 53 milliliters per kilogram per minute, they are in the top 2.5%. So to be clear, if you take a 35-year-old man and one of them has a VO2 max of 53 and the other one has a VO2 max of 35, there is a 400% difference in their all-cause mortality over the coming year. Wow. Okay, so all-cause mortality, anything killing them over the coming year. That's right. Now, this becomes more and more profound as you age because the all-cause mortality ratio for a 35-year-old is incredibly low. Yeah. It's like 1%. So that means you're comparing 1% to 4%. It's not that big a deal. But when you get up to my age, so I'm two decades older than you. So now the low bar, the bottom quartile, is less than 29. The high bar is more than 50. Well, my relative mortality in the next decade is probably 2 to 3%. So now multiply that by four. Okay, when I get into my marginal decade, the low bar is 18. The high bar is 36. That's a 2x difference in VO2 max. A 4x difference in mortality is huge when the all-cause mortality for an 85-year-old is going to be you know, the one year annual, you know, the one year mortality for that person is, you know, more than 10%. Yeah. So one of the things that we do is we sort of think through this, not just through the lens of mortality, which is what I just walked you through here, but also health span, which is kind of what you were talking about earlier with the graph of strength and disability. So we have another figure that we show people that um, on the X axis shows age. Yeah. And on the Y axis shows VO2. And it has a whole bunch of lines that come across that show various activities. You know, if you want to be able to run a six minute mile, you have to have a VO2 that's very high. If you want to be able to run an eight minute mile, a 10 minute mile, if you want to be able to climb a flight of stairs without getting out of breath, like it shows all of these different things and you see what the required VO2 is. Mm -hmm. I think, in fact, we might even have these graphs in here. Yeah, right there. So we put your dot on the graph and we say, if you stay where you are, you're, meaning right at that green curve, you're in for a great life. Why? Because even when you're in your 80s, you're still gonna be able to do all of those things. So the, the results you're looking at here are Jack's results. Yep. Who runs the production here. He came to your center. Yep. 
came to 10 squared in Austin. He did the test. I think he was on the treadmill for like an hour or something like that. And can you explain to me exactly what his results say as it relates to what you were just describing? Yeah, so he did both a zone two and a VO2 max test. So Jack got on the treadmill and you know there's a protocol for how you warm somebody up. You really want them to be able to get to a maximum effort. You don't just put them on the treadmill and crank it up. You take, you take your time getting them up there. And he had an amazing result. So his VO2 max was 4.1 liters per minute. And he achieved that at a heart rate of 204 beats per minute, mm. which is higher than what was predicted for his age. If you normalize it by his weight, he was at 56.5 milliliters per kilogram per minute. So when you look at his age, because he's in his 20s, he was at about the 97th percentile for his age, meaning his VO2 max was higher than 97% of people his age. And uh, so out of the gate, that just tells us from a longevity standpoint, our goal is to keep him there as long as possible. I mean, we're so ambitious with our patients and clients that we actually want them to be, as, as an aspiration, to be two decades younger at the top 2%. Mm-hmm. So if you're 50, you want to be VO2 max north of 53. And then the other thing we do is we check on something called heart rate recovery. So in 60 seconds post VO2 max, how long does it take? Uh, how many beats does their heart rate come down in one minute? This is also a very powerful predictor of mortality because it's a huge indication of what's called parasympathetic sympathetic balance. So it's basically a question of how does the how how much is their autonomic nervous system in favor of sort of a stress response versus a recovery response? And so the gold standard here, we want to see people that can recover at least 30 beats in the first minute. He did pretty well. He recovered 28 beats. You know, if you're really, really fit, you're going to be 40, 50 beats of recovery within the first um, wow. one minute. It's incredible. incredible. Then we tested his... Um, lactate levels, and we ran him for what we called zone two testing, right? So zone two is his aerobic base. This is where he should be spending 80% of his training, 80% of his cardio training time should be in this energy system. So it's hard enough that it's not just pure recovery, but not so hard that it's, you know, uh, uh, p- pushing energy systems that are that are higher. This is, this is a pace he should be able to hold for an hour and he should certainly feel like he's working, but not feel it too much. Technically, it's also a place where he's produ- he's got maximum fat oxidation. So we do this also in the same measure on a treadmill. This is a bit more of a complicated test because you're titrating between how he feels and what his blood lactate levels are. Maybe not to get too complicated in the weeds on that, but we're simultaneously looking at the ratio of how much carbon dioxide he produces to how much oxygen he consumes. Mm -hmm. That tells us how much fat he is using in his own body. And we look at that number, and he maxed out at 0.77 grams per minute, which is very good. One gram per minute of fat oxidation is exceptional. So 0.7677 is pretty darn good. His lactate hit about two millimole, and he achieved this running at 7.3 miles per hour. So, so again, that's, there, there's a lot to unpack in there, but that gives us a pretty good sense of his level of fitness. And for a guy in his 20s, um, that's, that's really good fitness. He does a lot of running. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, but even this test is a body work. We normally would separate these two tests on two separate days. Okay. So people, you know, the, the, the people who come to 10 Squared are not from Austin. They're from all over the place. So they come in for two days of testing, and you got to sort of figure out a way to take a person who's not necessarily that fit and – and allow them to do these tests. So it's kind of broken up over to a couple days so they can mix it with the strength testing and all the other stuff. And if you were advising Jack on how to improve some of these scores here, what would you say? So the truth of the matter is, looking at his stuff here, I would say, I think you've got the endurance thing really covered. In his case, there were other issues that were uncovered during his intake that were of more concern. And this is a matter of like now what we think of as portfolio management, right? So... When your VO2 max is in the top 2%, when you're fat oxidizing 0.7, you know, almost 0.8 grams per minute, 
and he's got a heart rate of 165 to 170 when he's um, in zone two. I mean, this guy's cardio is dialed in. Can I ask a favor? Please, can you hit the subscribe button? If you've watched more than one before, how, how about that? If you've watched more than one, first one free, buy one, get one free. The second one, I'm gonna have to ask you to, to subscribe. If this is the first time you've seen a clip on this channel, move along, you don't need to subscribe. But if you've seen one before, please do me a favor, help a guy out, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much.